Alright, welcome to my channel. Um, with all the renewed interest in the Fallout franchise due to the Amazon Prime show, uh, I figured it was a good time to show the new players how to mod their Fallout games. Um, I'm going to be starting with Fallout 4, um, and in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and get mod organizer. Um, there's a few different mod programs you can use. Um, I prefer Mod Organizer. Um, it's kind of the cleanest and easiest to use. Uh, I used to use Nexus Mod Manager, um, but it's it's pretty sloppy program. Um, and uninstalling, it was hit or miss. Is sometimes it would just give me a mysterious error, and I would never figure out why it wouldn't install a mod, and I'd just have to give up. Um, so as soon as I switched over to Mod Organizer, I have not regretted it. So for this, we're going to grab the latest version from GitHub. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, um, I am using the Steam version of Fallout 4. Um, Mod Organizer apparently can't work for the Windows Store Game Pass versions uh, because the file system is incompatible just the way that the game runs. And download the exe. Alrighty. Yes. Um, so I am going to put this in a different folder and I'll explain a little more later. Essentially I already have Mod Organizer installed. Alright, gonna launch Mod Organizer. So when you first start it, you're going to get this dialog here, Instance Manager. Uh, you're going to want to create a new instance here. And you have two options, a global instance or portable instance. There's a little more description here. Um, but essentially, I like to keep mine completely separated. So my Skyrim mod organizer is, is one completely separate program. Um, and for that, you use a portable instance. Next. And we're going to go to Show Advanced Options uh, because I want my downloads to go on a different drive. keep all my high demand programs on an SSD so the uh, space is a little limited and I don't want it wasted with all these downloaded mods. So here we are, Mod Organizer. The first thing I'm going to do is change the theme to dark mode. Ah, much better. Alright, so here we are. Um, Obviously, um, all the DLCs I have installed show up right here. Uh, they are non-mod non organizer files, uh, meaning they're not actually managed by mod organizer, but it will still show you that they are loaded into your Fallout 4 installation. Here are all the plugins and archives. 
obviously your data folder. Save games. I have some old save games here that I am going to be using uh, once I get Mod Organizer set up. Um, I was actually moving from Nexus Mod Manager, which I started having so many problems with um, uh, with my Skyrim game. Uh, at a certain point, it just crashed every 15 minutes. Um, it's really hard to fix damage that you've done to your saved games. Um, but oddly enough, when I installed... Uh, all the same mods in Skyrim Special Edition um, with Mod Organizer, I was actually able to use the same saved game, and it seems to be perfectly stable, no crash to desktop, nothing like that. So, um, alright, to add a f uh, mod file, um, I'm using Nexus Mods. Uh, there are plenty of other sites on there, but this is what I've always used. So, Fallout 4. Um, one of the first mods that I would download would be the unofficial Fallout 4 patch. Um, this is going to fix all of the, the little bugs that Bethesda didn't bother to fix in, what, 15 years. Um, so one thing to keep in mind here on Nexus Mods is um, every mod page is going to have a requirements section. Um, and you need to make sure that you meet all of these requirements, otherwise the mod is not going to work properly. Um, in this case, the unofficial Fallout 4 patch requires all the DLCs other than the um, texture pack. Um, most mod creators are really good about putting it in their requirements, uh, but it's a good idea to read through the description to make sure there's nothing, uh, nothing you're missing. So we're going to go ahead and mod manager download. It's going to remind you that you need these additional files. Good. When you first do this, you're going to have to set up your link proxies. Mine's already set up. So as you can see, it's already downloaded. Um, occasionally with Mod Organizer, you'll see this not downloading at all. If you just right-click on it and hit pause and then hit start, sometimes it'll uh, sort of kickstart it. Um, but I've only seen that on really small bug fix files that show up as like zero kilobytes um, generally the bigger files they work just fine so we'll go ahead and right click and install categories have not been mapped yeah we will just call that good for now and you have a chance to rename it I don't need to and then you check the box over here to finish installing the mod. Essentially, Mod Organizer is a lot easier for uh, enabling and disabling mods because it uses a virtual file system. So once the file's been extracted and is over on this list, uh, checking and unchecking it isn't actually deleting uh, or adding any files, it's just flagging it as, uh, you know, to be used or to be ignored. So as soon as this is good, there we go. And now that's ready to go. So, um, if you have any previously downloaded mods, or if you're creating your own or manually downloading, uh, it's pretty simple to add it into Mod Organizer. Um, essentially, you're going to take these files and move them to whatever you set as your download folder. And just like that, 
you can see they've been added. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this one because we already installed it. And now install another one. Easy peasy. Activate. Um, one thing you might notice, um, if you try and install uh, the same file again, or some patches have a default name that is exactly the same, when you go to install it, Mod Organizer is actually going to tell you that it's the same file, or appears to be the same file, and you have an option to merge, replace, rename. If it's a patch file, then obviously just rename it. Patch. Done. And now you can see, with this one selected, it's actually showing that it is overwriting the one above it. And if you select this one, it's showing that it is being overwritten by the one below it. And this is how you're going to choose the priority of how these operate. You can just drag this up. And now this one is going to overwrite the one on top of it. So if you have any patches, obviously you want to have them below the core file. Uh, the same as if you have, uh, you know, body slide files that you've created. Uh, you want to make sure they're below the mods, the armor, clothing mods that you have. Uh, otherwise, they're not going to show up right in your game. Obviously, I do not need these because these are the same file. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And we'll go ahead and delete this one. And we will hide that. And now Fallout 4 would be ready to launch with just these two mods installed. Obviously, I have uh, more than I'm going to install. Um, but that's the basic way that you're going to start out. Alright, so here I'm going to install uh, Armor Smith Extended. If you look in the requirements, though, um, in addition to DLC requirements, we have a one Nexus requirement, which is Armor and Weapons Keywords Community Resource. If you click on this link, it will actually take you to that mod page. And then you want to obviously verify requirements here. DLC requirements. And that's it. So this is the framework um, that's going to allow the other mod to operate. So you'd want to download this one first, and then download the other one second. Uh, if you're doing a decent amount of modding to your Fallout or Skyrim, you're going to end up needing the script extender. So I'm going to get the F4SE Um, generally, it's best to get it from the website. Um, that's going to get you the most up-to-date version. But since Fallout 4 hasn't been updated in, like, I don't know, seven years or something like that, then this will be okay. Um, I do recommend you do a manual download. And that's what I'm going to do. them in our Fallout data folder, uh, which is going to be under your Steam apps, common, and Fallout 4. Go ahead and drag this over. Perfect. And at that point, you may choose uh, 
to make a shortcut for your F4SE loader because that's what you're going to be using to open the game from now on. So we'll go ahead and close both of those. Um, also in Mod Organizer, you can add a shortcut. So if you want, you can add a new executable from file, F4SE loader, open, and OK. And now, from here, you can actually launch your game. Uh, one thing that's nice about Mod Organizer is uh, um, I used Nexus Mods before, and if you forgot to open Steam, you would try and launch it, and it would uh, open Steam, and then Steam would get the request to open the game, which would cause Steam to then try and auto-update the game, which, as you may know, um, can, can break a lot of your mods. Um, so if you're heavily modding your Fallout game, you want to make sure that you avoid the auto updates until you know that the regular mods you use have been updated for that version. Um, Mod Organizer will actually remind you if you hit run, it's going to tell you that it requires Steam and you're going to have an option to start Steam. And it's going to say press OK once you're logged into Steam. So essentially this isn't going to request uh, that Steam open the game. All it is doing is opening Steam and then once it's done and logged in you're gonna hit OK and now it's gonna launch the game. That way you can be sure that it's not going to auto update your game in a way that you don't want it to. Uh, there's also a way to completely disable the game from launching from Steam, which is actually a, a pretty good idea to set up. And I'll go ahead and show you that now. So in order to do that, you're going to want to navigate back to your... Steam Apps folder and the application ID for Fallout 4 is 377160 so you take this ACF file and you're gonna wanna set it to read only and OK and what that's gonna do is when there's an update for Fallout 4 and you go to launch it from Steam, it's going to be unable to update, and it's actually going to fail, which is good, because you don't want it to update without your consent if you accidentally launch it from Steam out of habit, um, and it's easily reversible. You can always just go in here and remove the read-only option if you are ready to update and ready to... Uh, take on the burden of updating all of the now incompatible mods that you've installed. Um, one of the biggest ones is obviously the uh, Fallout 4 script extender, which does need to be updated for every change to the game. Alright, I think that's going to wrap up my first video of the Fallout 4 modding how-to. Um, if this was useful to you in any way, please like my video. Um, if you have any questions or you're having trouble with Mod Organizer, feel free to comment below, and I'll try to help you out the best I can. Thanks for watching, and happy modding.